This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast, episode 253. Now we're starting a brand new franchise. Nate never seen none of these films, the Sean Connery 007 films. We're going to start it all off with the one that kicked off the entire franchise, Dr. No from 1962. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co-host is Nate from Netflix Reviews. All right, Nate, so I'm not going to ask you how long has it been, but I will ask you is in terms of the Bond, like stuff with Bond movies. Did yes. you ever hear about Dr. No? Were you curious of watching any of the Sean Connerys before we start watching all of them? Okay, so I have heard of Dr. No in title only. I know nothing about it. I did not know it was the first one. If you would have asked me before I made this list, hey, yeah. Nate, what's the first Sean Connery? I would say From Russia With Love or Goldfinger because I've yeah. heard of them a lot. I had no idea Dr. No was the first one. As far as why, I, I, you know, this series as a whole, it's one of those franchises that like I enjoyed the Brosnan ones and I saw them when they came out, you know, when I was a teenager and I liked the Craig ones. I just never like had that strong urge to go back and watch all the old ones. So that's why I yeah. love this podcast because now I get to do it. So yeah. And as far as Sean Connery, you know, I I've seen clips of him as Bond pictures, but I yeah. literally, like I said, I've never seen even one scene of him as Bond. Yeah. I mean, look, they're all different across the board in terms of the, the way they, they act, the way <laughs> their bonds are portrayed is totally different between each of the actors. Yes. So that's the cool thing. So since you've seen already Pierce Bronson, seen Daniel Craig, you've seen Sir Roger Moore Grandpa version. Roger Moore. Timothy yeah, Dalton. Yeah, and then you seen Timothy Dalton. Yeah. So now you're about to see the original put on the suit and see what happens. So with that said, let's see what the critics and audience first said about this 19 62 hit what is crazy good crazy good here we go getting finally getting out of the the depths of the blade (laughs) movies and the the sequels that are horrible we got a 95 percent critic score for dr no and an 82 percent audience score so overall beloved first entry in the franchise it is but you know what those numbers really don't mean as much i mean i'm happy that we got those numbers out the way because we've been in some snooze fest throughout the weeks but with this one it's gonna be very interesting because re-watching it now and we threw the damn scoreboard up. Mm-hmm. It's kind of changing the way I see these Bond movies. Yeah. And it's actually pretty fun when you yeah. break them down with our category. So True. with that said, let's just kick it all off. Lead character. Wait, are we scoring the intro like we do for all the other ones? You know, if, you know, it is a Bond movie. Let's so do let's it. Do we it. did it for let's literally it. every Dr. single no. other one. Yeah. All right. This Dr. one's going to no. be What's easy because there yeah. is no there's no song. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you get the Bond music? So I will give it credit. This is the first Bond movie, which means it is the introduction of that iconic music. So therefore, even though there is no song with a famous singer, that song's a banger. Like the score, the James Bond music, great. But then it changes to something else that's just okay. And then Three Blind Mice. That sounds like (laughs) it sounds like Harry Belafonte or something like that. Like some Jamaican guy singing Three Blind Mice. So it started to go down after the that music started. So I give the music a four because that it would have been a five. If it was just the score, fine. Yeah. As far as the visuals, I liked it. I I actually thought it was cool for the 60s, right? We got I gotta remember, this is the 60s. It's not yeah. 70s, 80s, but it was good, not great. You don't get all of this what became the staples with like the women doing all the stuff. You know, there's like a little bit of people stuff, but mostly it's like dots and stuff. It looks cool, yeah. but not amazing. I'll give it a three. Overall, I'll give the whole intro like it's like a three and a half. Yeah, I mean I agree. I, it's a three. It's just a colors going across the screen. <laughs> dots. And, yeah, it's like dots. <laughs> Yeah. And it's like, and but you do get the iconic score. Like, I mean, and it's loud. It's not like it's super low. Yeah. I could imagine back then in those like terrible speakers, just like blasting like the <laughs> big all trumpets out. and <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I give it a three. I don't think it was like that crazy. And the three blind mice kicked in. But what was cool about this one though, it didn't do like the thing and then and then it blows up and then it starts the movie. It goes like you right. know what I mean. It has like that slow end and then yeah. it goes into the movie. This one, it went straight into like three blind mice and all of a sudden you see the th- old guy the walking, old guys walking across the, yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> blind guy so I was just like you know what it was kind of creative very different take from the other ones that we've seen that is kind of just the iconic intros where the, the circle blows up Mm-hmm. And then it goes right into the movie. But this one was kind of different. So with that, I gave it a three. You gave it a three and a half-ish yeah. uh, score on it. All right. Lead character, Sean Connery, James uh, Bond. Honestly, this guy is cool as hell. 
This guy was <laughs> this guy was smooth. And maybe it's because the last one I watched was old Grandpa Roger Moore being 70 mm-hmm. years old, you know. But Sean Connery as Bond, I get it. Oh, even with just one movie, I get it. Like, I get why yeah. people like his version. As far as the, the performance was good. I thought Sean Connery was really good. He obviously very handsome, so you don't got to worry about the looks. He got the hairy chest. Great. <laughs> Women love it, right? He has the stature. Like, everything physically great. Great. As far as the character, I liked him. I really liked this version of Bond. Like, he's already been in there for a while. You know, none of these, except Casino Royale at the beginning with the black and white, like, none of these movies show him, like, starting out. Uh, and I kind of like that. Like, he just yeah. is the agent already. He's been there for years. I like the thing with the gun where he wants to keep his gun and then he tries well, to sneak Beretta. it out. <laughs> yeah, the dude's <laughs> yeah. like, hey, leave your gun here or whatever. Um, yeah, him. yeah, that was cool. And I, I thought he was great. Now, I don't know if he'll maintain, but I do think he was a fantastic Bond, and I'm comparing him, of course, to all Bonds. You know, obviously, the newer ones have the advantage of more action, direction, and stuff like that. But I thought he held his own in the movie he's in. I thought he was fantastic. I gave him a five so far. Right off the bat, very strong. I liked him. Yeah, I agree. I I don't think that it was going to change as much, because I, I don't watch much Dr. No, mm-hmm. but I do remember his charisma and charm was like throughout the whole movie. Mm-hmm. The only thing is he was kind of rapish in some of the scenes, which I was just like, okay, but that's the 60s because we did a lot yeah. of other movies in that era They're that kind of felt like the that. same forced, yeah. like the men were forcing themselves on the women. So we got to remember like at that time, that's what was, was going to be written. So with that, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty cool. And then that legendary shot of him in the casino and she's like, and you are? And he's just like lighting up a cigarette. Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of the most iconic, actually out of all 25 films, I think that's the most iconic gene, like when he says his name. I think just this movie has move. two historically iconic shots. There's that one and, and Ursula Andrews coming out of the water with the bikini. Oh, like, yeah. These are like yeah. Hollywood classic yeah. moments in cinema history. You know, even though it's a British movie, but still, I agree with you. It was awesome. Yeah, and you know what's crazy about her suit? If you notice, her suit is the same suit Holly Barry wore in Die Another Day in the Beach. Yeah, I know. She had the knife on the side. Yeah. Yeah, she had the knife on the side just like the original. Uh, yeah, the belt. You know what's crazy? Before we get to the lead uh, villain, did you think, it, let's, let's hypothetical, like if we would have had an actor, an a- actress play mm-hmm. this lady, because when I saw her, the lady that it's on the casino table with Bond, okay. I thought of Anna Del Carmis. Um, yeah, brunette, you know. She had that facial feature. See, now she was one hers. that, you know, as far as with Bond, she was, she just wanted him. He didn't even, he did he was trying yeah. to leave. She was like, hey, mm-hmm. you ain't leaving yet. Where's your room? I'm coming over. Yeah, I could see. I could see, see that. Yeah. I don't remember her name. I just know Honey Rider. That was, that Honey, was Yeah, I think it was Honey Rider. the main yeah. girl, Honey Rider. Yeah. But anyway, in terms of that, yeah, I, it, Sean Connery was amazing. He was cool. What was weird is like he was supposed to play British. He sounds Scottish. But it's okay. Yeah. He it's didn't fine. try to change it. He was just like, it is what it is. In general. Yeah, pretty much. But I, it was cool across the board. Five across the board. All right, main villain, <laughs> Dr. No. No, I didn't really like him. I didn't really like him. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm now... <laughs> I have now watched... Let's see. How many was in... Ro- Roger Moore was in seven, right? I think so. I think yeah. he was the most. Because this one's six. Seven yeah. from him. Two from Dalton. That's nine. Five from Craig. That's 14. Four for... I've seen 18 Bond movies now. And 18 villains. And this one's low tier. He's not in the movie at, at all until the very end. And then when he shows up, he's just this like unassuming Asian scientist with metal hands <laughs> that's like this. And he's like eating. And I'm like, why is he eating like that? And then he's like, uh, it's had side effects. And he's like, chomp, 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 chomp. And he has these little <laughs> chomper hands, you know? And it was so 60s. I do, I do try to always remember the era that I'm watching. You know, I'm not one of those, I'm not one of those people who looks at everything through a modern lens because it's not fair to the movies. Yeah, but even even then it was like kind of goofy with the metal hands. And other than that, he's like a scientist. He gets beat like he fights. He's like, he does some chops, like attempted chops. And then he drowns in the boiling nuclear water. I gave him a two. Honestly, I didn't really like him. His big like. 
it was a little confusing as far as like what speci- I know he was doing like a rocket and working with nuclear power and all this stuff, but his motivations seemed a little confusing. I did like that right off the gate. They dropped Spectre, you know, like he's part of Spectre. That was cool. Yeah. You know that it, I didn't realize it goes all the way back to the first Bond movie. So yeah. actually watching them this way, it's kind of cool. Like seeing Spectre in the new one and then seeing that it was the original, uh, but I still gave him a two. I, I didn't really care for him to be honest. Yeah. When it comes to Dr. No, it was hard because I was going to lean towards three, but I did go hard too because I mean, he did fight Bond, Yes, but it was just, they were setting it up mad easy. Like he was going to lose. Like he, like he literally jumped in the pool. Can't in the elevator the going in the water. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, you got metal hands, bro. Like, how are you going to get out of there? Like, that's the thing. Like, certain things like that, that like, irked me. And I was like, and I, like you said, like, I can't see the movie in terms of how we watch movies now. Right. So, like, I was watching and I'm just like, okay, was Dr. No effective plot-wise? I was like, in terms of him being a villain, yeah. He, he had an idea. He had a mastermind. It was it was going to go through until Bond, you know, foiled his plans, right? Yes. So I was like, he did have that. But in the other hand, his weak, his flaws were his two hands. So it was just like, <laughs> you couldn't, like, he couldn't get out of any situation. Like, either way, he was going in that water. Like, it was just, and then he was in a plastic suit to make it even worse. Oh, yeah, that suit was awesome. And the yeah. thing is, like, you could imagine if he did chop him or punch him, it would do serious damage because it's metal. But he yeah. missed. He's just like, Ugh. yeah. Well, He's a scientist. I can't expect him to be like a karate master. It's a cool no, name. I get though. it. No, no. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, but in terms of like everything, yeah. he had a cool layer. Yeah. I like, you know, so one thing I do like about the Bond set pieces and everything. I love how the vintage set pieces look. Yeah. It looked very cool. Like I, to me, I love that whole, how old it looks. Yeah. So I was just like, wow. It, I know we were so used to and, and I guess spoiled with the CGI and how, you know, the because they film out or, you know, outside and all that so it's like they could just do whatever they want and where in the 60s they had to practically figure out how we're gonna make these built cities yeah real so like physical yeah so for me like this is pinewood studios and i don't know if they really built that entire set like where they fought and they threw him into the thing probably so like yeah yeah maybe but i'm like i love it between that the man with the golden gun in that island that yeah that that, i was like that was a pretty good one too but there's a lot of iconic like locations throughout all the bond movies but this one i gotta say is up there and i liked it but anyway doctor no i gave it a two also i i kind of agree with you you gave it a two yeah all right (laughs) Action scenes. <laughs> All right, honestly, honestly, I'll be, I'll be fair. I, I, we got to be fair here because again, different time. What was considered action then is not considered action now, right? That being said, this had pretty o- okay action for the time. You know, I like a bomb. He fights. He fist fights. Which is cool. He's punching. He's chop. He. Do- I love when he karate chops. He karate. No, I love when he gets karate chopped. When uh, Doctor knows, like, take him. You know, r- um, soften him up or whatever. And the dude's like, chop. It's <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Um, so you get some. Oh, you get right up right in the beginning. Dudes are getting shot with silencers. Bro. That one chick yeah. gets blasted, and there's blood. So respect for blood. You know me. I love blood. Uh, so she gets shot, and there's actually bright red blood. So we get some shootings right from the jump. We get hand to hand fights. We get there's like the big explosion at the facility, like literally like yeah. a big actual big. Again, no CGI at this time, so you're actually blowing stuff up. I gave it a three, a, a 1960s three. I thought it was good. It's not. I can't go higher still because like. It's also kind of minimal. Like, it's in little spurts. This this movie has a lot of talking. So, you know, it's not a ton of action. But what's there, I thought, was actually really solid for the time. And it looked big budget. And, uh, yeah, I give it a three. Yeah, you're right. I mean, this movie's more storyline than action. But they had car chase scenes, too. I mean, they had some car chase. Oh, yeah. I totally remember forgot. Yeah, 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 he has that car chase scene. So, not the iconic ones that we all got used to. But he had some green screen. Yeah, that's right. Car it's chasing. Like, he's yeah. doing this with the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> he's going straight, but he's doing this. Yeah. Yeah, I love like, it. So, I mean, so you have all of that, and I agree with you. My favorite dude that gets assassinated in the beginning is the dude that got shot with the air pistol. Like, the, the guy shoots oh, yeah. him, and he's like, there's no blood. Oh, yeah. here's it. Boom, boom. Boom. Yeah, he's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> he goes in the car. Yeah. I was like, yeah, show an airsoft mm-hmm. pistol. Mm. I always like that scene. It just makes me laugh. And then the girl has like that weird cut. She goes, uh, 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 
<laughs> and then yeah. she goes down. And then she rolls over and she has like a little yeah. bright red splotch. Yeah. So for me, like, I, I like all those things. And there's another scene too where <laughs> 007, they're driving him to like this weird section in like in like some grassy area. Yep. And he knows that the guy is not there to pick him up and to kill him. And then he goes, he has the gun on him. Right, and the guy's trying to get the gun, and he chops him, and he pulls yeah. out the car, oh. and, then, and then he grabs the he grabs his hand, and then he does the Michael Jackson, and you are you okay, Flip? <laughs> <laughs> the karate chop chops him. Yeah. yeah, I love that part. I almost forgot yeah. about my favorite part, bro. The yeah, freaking flamethrower tank truck when it oh, lights dragon? that black guy on fire. <laughs> like, yeah. like I I thought he wasn't. I didn't think he was gonna die. Like yeah. he's just over. He's like. He's shooting, you can't hit it, you can't hit it. <laughs> it just gets blasted. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I almost want to give it a four just because they set that guy on fire, but I'll stick with my three. Yeah, no, I, I thought everything, I thought the whole action, I thought it was perfect. Like for the 60s, I yeah. thought it went very well. I mean, now it's laughable, but it was because when he flips the guy, it's like a fast motion. He's like, Chah. Mm. Yeah, and then makes a judo throw on him. <laughs> anyway, you know, three across throw. the board. All right, yeah. storyline. I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. I, I, I. It is a lot of story. The good thing about this movie, though, is that they tell their whole story, and the movie's only like an hour and forty-five minutes. Yeah, short. It's not very long. It's just a little confusing. I found it confusing. There were times where I didn't really know, like what was going on. And that's one thing about Bond films. I can say a few of them, not all of them, but they always have these moments where it's like, what is, what is happening right now? Like, I know Bond is looking for something or someone, but I am I never know what it is until he finds it. And I kind of, that always bugs me. And this is no different. Like he's at the hotel. He's putting freaking little strand of hair on the closet. I'm like, what, what is going on here? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> you know, he's walking around and then the dude's fighting with the black guy and the black guy's like, don't try to struggle. He wrestles alligators. And then he escapes <laughs> and then Felix Leiter shows up <laughs> right out of oh, nowhere. Yeah, Felix. That yeah, was cool. Yeah. But I just feel like stuff was happening for a little while in the middle just to get to that end part in the facility. And then you really know what's going on. Okay. This guy's a scientist. He's part of this terrorist organization. He was working with nuclear, nuclear power. He's going to sell bombs, nuclear missiles or whatever to. So I just feel like the middle part, it took a while. Like he's, he's investigating a murder of this guy that the three blind mice guy shot. Right. And he goes from investigating a murder to like uncovering this whole big thing. But then the middle part's a little confusing. So I I gave it a three. I, I was never bored. I was always like into it, like trying to follow i just feel like it wasn't the most intriguing story personally so i gave it a three well i'll tell you this <laughs> for all the years that i watched this movie it's still the same problem i did not know what the hell i was watching <laughs> like, see, I'm, you. I'm gonna be honest with you because like my, my wife called and i was like, yeah i finished dr no and she's like yeah what's the movie about i was like, I do not know i was like it's something about u.s space station that they're trying to do something but i'm like honestly i didn't know the first half of the movie was something like you really don't know and yeah. honestly for a first movie that catapults a, a mega franchise i can tell you right now six months in and i'm gonna go nate what is dr no about you're not gonna know shit you're gonna say he i can't fights tell dr. you right no, now i can't tell you right now what was going on in the middle yeah. i don't know and that's the thing like i could give you all the plot points for daniel craig's movie yeah. i could give you all the plot points for Pierce bronson's movie mm-hmm. i could give you one out of the two for timothy dalton <laughs> I, and I can give I you. I remember one of those too. Yeah. And then, when it comes to Sir Roger Moore, I can literally give you one out of seven. Because <laughs> honestly, <laughs> I, I really do not know. Half of these movies make, they just throw this guy in some weird predicament. I'm like, I really don't know what we're watching. It's just an yeah. interesting movie. So with this one, I literally did not know what the hell we were watching until he sat on the table and he explained everything to Bond. Because I was Same. just like, oh, Okay. Yeah. So nothing wrong. Maybe some people got it before me, but I'm honestly, for the many times that I watched Dr. No, it is one of the most, I couldn't figure out again, even breaking it down in our categories. I was just like, well, where am I going to put this? So 
With storyline, I gave it a two. Okay. Because if it's That's confusing fair. for me and I watch it like multiple times, <laughs> yeah. I can't give I can't slap it a three. But again, it's a it's a two. All right, overall. Uh, yeah, that's a great description of this movie. And you know what? I'm just gonna make a quick aside. This is spy movie month. We're doing four Bond movies, we're doing four other spy movies. This is one thing about the spy genre. I feel like all of the movies are like this. Yeah. They own you you have to you have to pay a lot of attention and when they're over like a week later you won't remember what <laughs> or what happened it's i think it's the nature of the genre right because you have all this yeah. espionage and creeping around and the storylines are always like convoluted like there's always a terrorist who they have to look into to see what they're doing and there's another one and another one and then they get side so i think it's the nature of the genre of spy movies that being said i thought this movie was fun it moves quick. It's short, which I can't say about some of those Roger Moore ones. Like they were all two hours oh. plus. And I'm like, why are these long and boring? And this one, I, I could I can't say I was bored ever. I can't say I was confused often. <laughs> but then they would do something that was like, all right, I'm confused, but this tank has a flamethrower on it. And so I'm <laughs> like, like I'm having a good time, right? Yeah. Or uh Ursula Andress, gorgeous, by the way. Beautiful actress. Okay, yeah. I can look at her at least because I sure don't know what's happening. So yeah, I feel like there's a lot of elements for a solid movie. I understand those rotten tomatoes scores a hundred percent i think this was a as far as establishing a franchise i don't think there's any problems with it per se i i bet back then if you read james bond books you would have got like more out of this than not but even still i gave it a three i think it's a good solid movie i don't think it's amazing I didn't hate it by any means and I, I enjoyed it, but I just, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't speak to me really like that to give it any higher. So I gave it a three. Yeah. I mean, overall, like in terms of everything, I mean, you have your action, you got John Connery's iconic scenes and everything. The story is very lackluster. I mean, it is, it, there's no way you could hold it, but the score is amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, one thing, even when they're in Jamaica and they're playing all the Jamaican music and then they, then every time, every time Bond is on scene or he does something, the damn score comes out. Yeah. And I love it because it's just it just out of the blue. It's just like, and I was just like, yes, it's like, I love it. And it's cool how how that happens. And then when you see the Daniel Craig. Because Casino Royale, he was not established as 007 in the beginning. And he was never, he never said his name Bond James Bond until the last second of the movie when he shot Mr. White on the bridge, I mean, on the, on the staircase. Yeah. Then they play the actual music that the, the iconic song. So it's, it's weird how the song is a staple of the franchise and you get it throughout this first movie. So I love that. I gave it a four. I, I gave it a four. I, I think it's a, it's a very entertaining film. Yeah. I don't think as a the spy genre i do agree with you but it's very entertaining you're gonna get lost it, it is what it is there's a lot of action movies that we're gonna be doing but we did so far in that realm of suspense and thrills and all that yeah. stuff that it is boring but if it, a movie's really good and it's entertaining and it's watchable crap it's good and i think and and i gave it a four i, I think it's a great it's a great film to catapult a franchise. So, yeah, with that said, all right, total points. I have a 16 out of a 25. I thought it was solid. I thought it was good. I, I think the villain was my weakest point. But other than that, I thought mm. it was a good film. It was good. I liked it. And also, it looked great. I watched this on HBO Max. I don't know if it's a... I don't know if it was in 4K or just HD, but that crap looked really good. So uh, if they ever do put these out in 4K, I think they're going to look amazing. I think they always look good because they film outside a lot. So you get a lot of water and nature and yeah. trees. And, and as far as the globe trotting aspect, he goes to Jamaica in this movie, which was cool. Like that was different than some of the other places where the other ones are set. Besides, what was the one with all the voodoo stuff? Um, was that the Roger? Live and let a, die. Yeah, that one. It yeah. reminded me of that in that regard. Like it was like this kind of tropical place, but it wasn't as much racist voodoo stuff. It was just like yeah. Asian Asian scientists <laughs> <laughs> and like the Bahamian workers who are just like you know they wrestle alligators allegedly. So yeah, I thought it was fun. Sixteen. Yeah, I gave it a sixteen. Also, oh. we're we're on the same uh, on the same boat on this first movie. Look, I liked it. It's iconic. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. catapulted a big ass franchise so with that said nate what is coming up next on the podcast yes. well said uh coming up we got we got more spy movies baby we're starting mm. a new other our other movies will also be spy movies and the first one up is tony scott's spy game starring brad pitt robert redford so we're going to be doing that on the next episode and then next week our next j sean connery i'm actually i'm so you know just based off this one 
I'm looking forward to these. The next one is the one I thought was the first one from Russia with Love. So we're okay. going to be doing from Russia with Love. I'm hope fingers crossed on an, a theme song on this one. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. All right. So there you have it, guys. If you guys want to follow us in our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie guys, head over to Instagram at Action Movie Guys Podcast or head over to YouTube.com slash Geeks and Flicks for the video version of the podcast. Other than that, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and that's my co-host, Nate from Netflix Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out. Oh, 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 oh